Hey guys and gals, today we're going to work on a Pen International V 30 VSW. Should have break it down, service it, and reassemble it. We're going to start by removing this uh, quadrant ring here and then opening up the reel by removing those five screws on around the outside. This is a Torx 15, size 15 screw. And what you'll see here is there are two pieces under there when I remove this last screw. You have the metal piece on top and that plastic piece that, it, that supports it. Now I can do those five screws on the outside. And I'm just loosening these up with the, uh, with the torque screw and then I'm going to use my small screwdriver to get the rest off. Now we can just pull that straight up, I like that. We're going to set that aside for now, we're going to work on the left side and kind of work way back to the right side. So I'm just going to pull this uh, spool out and then work on getting that left side plate off. These come out, sometimes they get stuck on there just because of a little bit of corrosion or whatever. But in general, they come off fine. I will note that the reel itself, nothing really felt wrong with it. Um, so I don't think there's any parts to, to be changed out, but we can see there's a lot of corrosion happening. Uh, these screws on the left side plate as well as the right, the right side plate should all be the same size. So you can certainly mix and match. So it just gets stuck, that's all, no big deal. Uh, so let's pop this off. See, like I was saying, they get stuck sometimes on here. That's what happened to this one. That one had a lot more wear than the right side. Okay, so we're gonna work on the left side first. Uh, one thing to note is you can see on these screws, there's a lot of, uh, well, some spots of corrosion or salt built up. We're gonna clean those things off before we put them back in. We may even run them through an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I really don't use it that, that often. Uh, I thought from the outside of this reel that I may end up doing that, but inside doesn't look as bad as I thought it would be. So, all right, so we're going to get started by removing those two screws there and there. And just back them up. Now we're going to pull these dogs off, those rings on the outside off. These are just the springs for the dogs. This bearing comes out. And then we're gonna clean this stuff up, come back to you and just show you how to put it back together. Okay, so I added some grease that I used to grease this uh, bearing here to put inside the edges so it doesn't uh, get frozen inside there. Now I'm gonna grease these. It's really just a light coat going on there. A little bit of grease around these posts. We could certainly stick some over these holes as well. Now for these, uh, remember you saw like a lot of corrosion and stuff on those uh, those screws. What I used to clean these holes out was uh, just a pipe cleaner. So I just tucked it in there, kind of swished it around a little bit and pulled it out. Let's go ahead and drop this in. And that will obviously ooze out as it as it works. Uh, some people like to oil these things. I prefer to grease the two outside bearings and oil the spool bearings. So we're gonna drop this on first. It's gonna stick in looking kind of like like that. I kind of just hold it at an angle there like that, and then just start screwing it in. And then I finish it up. Uh, I'll finish it up with the other screwdriver. So 
Same thing for this one. Now you want to make sure that's all the way in inside the. Uh, there's two little channels, right? There's one there, and then there's one at the base. You want to make sure it's inside the one at the base when you're screwing this down. And you do snug that down pretty good. Now we can just add a little bit of grease on this. Don't need a lot. Just drop it over there. When you do drop it over, just make sure you test it to see if it's working properly. It should flick up like that. If it feels uh, kind of tight to you or doesn't flick uh, like you want it, Flip it to the other side and see how the other side works. Sometimes it's a little bit better. Now we'll go ahead and do the one piece frame. Uh, I'm gonna undo those four screws there and then after that I'll remove this plate or the stand and then do undo these screws here. I'm gonna test these out first to see if they move, which they do, which is good. And then I'm gonna spray some I'm gonna spray some corrosion X to kind of work its way inside there. Just to help free that stuff up. I'm just gonna work at that. I'm gonna go back and forth on these just to help the uh, the oil just kind of work down inside there. Under there you have a gasket. As ugly as that looks, it's still still highly likely reusable. So we're gonna keep it there. Now to undo these, I'm gonna spray this down first. Then use my my adjustable wrench. Hopefully work that out. General, these don't really get stuck. Uh, if they do, you're snapping them off, is what's happening. So, you do have to be a little bit careful with them. All right, so I'm just gonna use, essentially I'm gonna use a, a wire brush, a uh, brass brush, to kind of clean the grooves inside here, paper towels, like you see me use all the time, and Q-tips to kind of get this all cleaned up. I'm also gonna use a wire brush on these things to get some of that green off, and to clean those grooves out on those things. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna grease a few places here. You can just kind of follow along. I'm sticking that, uh, that brush inside the hole to try to get down inside there. And then I'm also going to grease around here where those lugs will sit. Also going to oil these holes. I could put corrosion X. Uh, 
they're basically the same same thing but when I put the screws in I'm gonna grease those screws also And some will leak up, that's fine. I ended up replacing the, the gasket here. I'm gonna do a pattern, kind of like this, inside here. That's around where the gasket sits. Having excess is not that big of a deal. Now we're gonna add some grease to these screws. They're in the bottom. Grease these threads. Now we can lay this gasket over it. Just make sure it lines up. Sometimes you put these things on and you have to rotate them. Go figure. Well, before I did, I'm going to add these studs. They're easier to deal with when they're nothing. There's nothing in the middle. And snug is good. You don't need to like seriously over tighten them. That around there looks good. I'm gonna rest this over it. And I'm gonna stick one screw in over here. Just get it started. I'm not going all the way down. And one over here. That's to make sure it doesn't slip out of place. Now we can put the rest in. And for this, I do go with an X pattern. Snug that one down, and then I go over here. Wipe off the excess if you want to, or just leave it there. All right, now let's hop to the spool. We're gonna undo a screw here first to get started. Gotta hold on on it. Hold on on the uh, pinion over there. Let's pull those off. Hold on the pinion while you unscrew that screw over there. comes off there should be a washer under there as you can see and now we can pull this out leave it there for now to remove this we're going to use a tool uh, first we're going to try to untie remove it with our hand if that doesn't work then we'll use a tool uh, but first you have to lift this little thing up and then turn it over kind of like that so it looks like that over the ridge Let's see if we can do it by hand. Nice. I always like that. I mean, that was a little bit loose, but you know, not too bad. Set that aside. Pull this up. We'll check that in a sec. Ooh. We'll do a little double check on it and see. Notice that there was a drag washer spring. You have the drag plate. Your other drag washer underneath there. Uh, there's a washer under here. Let's get that off. Sorry, you guys can't really see that. I apologize. I'm not really laying it out like it should look, so just uh, don't uh, don't kind of follow that because it may not be correct. Pop out this bearing. You have sleeve in there secondary piece inside there. Then the other side we can remove those 
four screws right there to get that plate off. All these screws are the same size. Pull that up. And now we can pull this piece out. All comes to like one piece, kind of like that. There's a few pieces here. Okay, so that's kind of how it looks broken down. Uh, there's that screw, that, I'm sorry, that spring that was on the pinion. I'm gonna get this all cleaned up, come back and show you how this all goes back together. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is put this bearing back in because if we don't put that in right away uh, and do something else afterwards, we may have to open some things up like this plate. I'm gonna grease there, around here. Just like that. And that should work out. Add some grease around here also. Now remember I said I was gonna oil these bearings, so let's go ahead and do that. They're both the same size, so either one can go in. So we'll just drop this one in like that. And then this plate goes down over it. I was going to add a little bit of oil to these holes right here. And let's get this plate. Add a little bit of grease on the back side. Drop that on. The beveled edge are, are facing down. And we'll secure them. Uh, one thing you do not want to do with these is just over snug them, so don't over tighten them, but they need to be snug uh, because they'll have some vibration happening on them from that clicker. Sometimes what can happen is if you over tighten these things you may end up snapping one of these things off all right that's good uh, you can do it now if you want or you can wait uh, we're gonna put a line or just a little bit of grease around there for when the clicker interacts with it I'm gonna wait till the end because I want to turn this over like this now I'm gonna grease these two pieces here because I'm gonna drop them in Kind of grease the cider because that kind of slides back and forth. So I want to get a good lather inside there. And there it goes. Just drop it in, just like that. Now we're gonna take our other bearing and stick that in there after we grease. Uh, that receiving hole in there. That should work. Let's move that. All right. When that um when this pinion goes in, it'll straighten that up and then that'll spin a little bit better for you if you feel any kind of resistance. Clean that off. Uh, now we can go ahead and grease these drag washers. Uh, clean these off with some uh, brake cleaner fluid. I use that version. And now to grease these drag washers, I'm gonna use Cal's Universal Drag Grease. And we're just putting a light coat We want to make sure we get the entire surface area of this drag uh, greased. You can wipe off the excess on this or you can just leave it alone and it'll just squeeze out. 
Uh, I prefer to have it a little bit neater, so I tend to wipe this stuff off. Just make sure it's a clean portion of the cloth that you're using. And if you wanted to, you could grease inside here now, which I think we'll do. Just in that section right there where that those dogs interact with the um, the ratcheting feature on this on this um, on this plate, or you can do it afterwards. A little bit around there, some inside that hole. Go from both sides, but work. Now we can take our drag washer. We're using this one to put in first. That'll go inside there. Stick our washer on there, or we can stick it on here. Either one works. As long as it goes through that hole, we're fine. Uh, I did not grease inside there. Let me go ahead and do that also. And around there. Drop that in place. Now we can take our drag washer. We're using this one to put in first, that'll go inside there. Stick our washer on there, or we can stick it on here. Either one works. As long as it goes through that hole, we're fine. I uh, did not grease inside there. Let me go ahead and do that also. And around there. Drop that in place. Now we take our, our plate. It has three little tabs on the side of it, or on the outside. They'll fit into those grooves or channels right there like that. Take our spring. It's the smaller of the two. Drop that on. And then situate that over uh, where you're trying to fit that is inside that little channel inside there. And you can feel it seat. You can feel a seat in place when you get it right. Right there is good. Now all we're gonna do at this point is go ahead and close this up. Now to tighten it, you're going to go to the right, but I'm going backwards to feel this drop in place. And when I feel that, I'll start tightening it down to the right. Just keep an eye on this, make sure it stays in the middle. You don't want to move that out of the way or have any issues with it. Now I'm going to hand tighten this, but what I noticed when I was playing with this or cleaning it, the uh, one of those three receiving holes that that drag plate sits in, is where one of these things will lock into. It's kind of over here somewhere. So I'm going to take this, turn it, so it just drops back down in place. But you'll notice it's not set. So when I turn it back this way, it gets locked into one of those uh, recesses. And now it's locked in place. Now we can take our uh, pinion gear, just kind of lightly grease all over it. I like to grease the entire area of this thing uh, just because Add a little bit of grease to that end right there, where that screw is going to go into. And now I'm going to take this, put our spring on, looking like that. Stick it through. Kind of work it until it gets through all the way. And you'll see the end is over here. Now all we're going to do is take our screw and washer, hold this down so it doesn't go anywhere and then secure that screw. You'll notice it starts to pull inward, which is essentially what it needs to do. 
And I'm gonna snug it out a little tighter, but it does need to be crazy tight. And that kind of holds everything together. Now the last piece would be to grease these drag washers. And when we put back put this back on the right side, it'll be a uh, kind of a balancing act. Uh, but we're gonna stick them on there for now, just to get them out of the way. Now when we put these drag washers, I'm sorry, these tension washers together, they're gonna sit. Uh, facing each other essentially like concave to concave uh, and looking kind of like a flying saucer instead of nesting which would be no gap between them they'll be facing each other if you look at an angle on the inside you'll see a space put one one set on then the other set okay now we're gonna start getting this reel put back together somewhat I'm gonna grease around here like I said earlier that I would that's really just kind of a light coat. You want to have something there, uh, but if you want that clicker louder, you could put less grease there, but I want to have something there just to be on the safe side. Now we're gonna take our lug here and just drop that on. Make sure that fits in place. I'm not going to put the left side plate on yet. I'm going to go ahead and grease all these screws here. I've already cleaned them. And the important areas to clean would to grease would be the tips because everything can kind of work its way down when you're screwing it in. All right, so now we can line this up. It should kind of just fall into place, but depending on the reel, it may not because of some sort of possible warping or whatever. Nothing major, but you know, it does happen. So all we do here is since it's not gonna go on, we're gonna screw it on, essentially is what we're gonna do. So I'm lining that up, stick the first screw in, just to kind of get it secured. There you go, it just popped on me. I think you heard that. And for these, you can tighten them down right away. There's no need to wait since it's a, a one piece middle. What you see here is the, is the oil that I put inside those holes coming out. Alright, now they're all snug down. Let me just wipe that off really quick. And now I'm just going to drop this spool inside so we kind of get that out of the way. Yeah, it is a, <laughs> it is a tight fit that it goes in. There we go. Alright, so now to the business end. Uh, there's a couple ways of removing this. There's one definite way of not removing it, and that is to just try to turn this with like this, or with the two uh, pliers or something to take it off. Because there's some uh, prongs inside there that's recessed a little deeper that can get damaged and cause this to not function properly if you do that. I'll either use a strap wrench uh, with the tool. If you look on the sides here, there's two flat areas, one right there, and one right there. This tool is designed to slip inside of it and secure the uh, secure that nut. So essentially what you're doing here is you're holding on to this in that direction like that and then you're pulling like this with this. So let's try this first. If it works great. If it does not work then we'll try the second method. And it is kind of cumbersome, honestly. It's not like a fun thing. Let's try it with our fingers and see if that works instead. Nope, that didn't work. <laughs> oh, it did work. I don't know if that's good or bad. It did kind of work. Alright, stop working. Alright, anyhow, so I'll do this, 
take this and then turn it. And if that does not work, which I don't think it did, we can take our vice grip, open it up to where it fits around that. Take some plumber's tape. Kind of wrap it around it. Kind of like this. You don't want to you don't want to uh, block the bottom part where this needs to slide on. But it also doesn't need to be perfect. You know, so you just kind of wrap it around. All you're trying to do is protect that knurled cover. So now we'll take this put this back on there like that and I'm gonna open this up to where it's around it all I'm gonna do is hold on to this so I don't move that thing and then turn this and that plumber's tape just essentially protects the metal piece from getting scarred up. And now it's off. Now at this point we're just going to pull this straight up. It just kind of comes out. I'm going to try to lay these out so you can see how they came out. Uh, but it may not be the same way. Or the exact way. So I'll wait till the end. Then you have a metal plate that's on here. The way to get that up is to lift this end up gently then rotate that way just like that now this black piece comes up there are a few pieces in here you have a couple springs and two bars that hold that spring and those springs in place then you have this which has an e-clip on it and that is not the easiest thing to get off uh, I'm gonna grab my towel and I'm going to pinch those two ends of the e-clip or c-clip and push it and this usually works but it doesn't mean it will There's that. Now we can lift this up. No, this is just this one piece. But you'll see the two flat sides I was referring to uh, when I was trying to take this thing off or secure it with this piece. Now this comes up. That's all it is. Now you can unscrew this and get the gear inside to drop. that off there we go you have this piece here I don't know why it gets stuck sometimes it just pulls up like so notice there's an indented side the indented side is facing down but the way it's looking so far is just like that setup now I can lift this up and you'll notice that there's another e-clip or c-clip that is supporting or holding this uh, shaft in place so we kind of got to do the same thing in terms of taking it off and for this one I'm just going to kind of get it started uh, because it's such a large e-clip that all I want to do is get it started so that I can get this inside of it to kind of twist it off so all I did there was stick this in between one of those little gaps right there and twist as I pulled now this can just drop straight down, just like that. We'll set the side for now. Uh, I'm going to take the bearing out. Show you what's under there. Loosen those two screws that are right there. That's for the cover. I think those are the same uh, size as the the screws for the the quadrant. So. 
they may be the same but I'm gonna keep them separate just in case we can pull this up straight up like that you notice there's an Eclipse secure in that inside there that is like one of the most difficult things to separate so I don't think we're going to do it. <laughs> You're going to leave it the way it is. We are going to clean it up, but we're not going to remove that eclip. So this entire piece will be one piece. Pop this up. Don't worry about that. Then you have that washer that was above it. We can push these things out. And that's how this looks. Uh, do I want to remove this? Let's go ahead and take it out. So to remove this clicker, we're going to undo that nut that's right there. I'm just going to unscrew it all the way up to the top and then push out to get it out of there. Alright, so you have that piece push this out you have this two washers that are under there you have one that's a lock washer for this piece itself there's like a little channel right there there you go right there then you have a lock washer for the plate itself which has a hooked down hooked down end these do come out but there's nothing to do with them you replace the entire piece okay so one of the final pieces to break down would be this assembly here uh, we have a washer that's under here that looks like that get this out of the way we're not going to break this down then you have piece in the middle. I'm just going to push out. So you have that, that, and then we have this piece here that we can screw or uh, back it out or forward, not out, to get it off. It may just be easier to support it inside this have the follower just kind of sit inside of it like this to have some support while you screw while you unscrew that but the layout is this way just like that now the last thing we can break down here or we're going to break down here would be the uh, this stack so the first thing we're going to do is get that middle piece out of there let's put this over here Get the middle piece out of it. There's like a plastic piece that's inside there. Sometimes this works by just tapping it out. It does not always. So you got to find another way to remove it. Get that spring out of there. Now obviously I'm going this way as to the orientation. Inside there there's going to be a, uh, a screw that we're going to use our flathead for. And we're going to unscrew it backwards. So lefty loosey counterclockwise now that comes out and this is what it looks like I did forget to show you that there's a washer here that goes above the stack I'm gonna leave that separately just kinda like right there in front of me and now all we have to do is remove this spring that's on the bottom here and you just kinda push in or push out and kind of up and rotate it around to get it off let's stick that kind of right there so you can see it now this comes off this bar right here notice there's a thing that says top on it top would be facing up towards you when you're looking at it like this now you can take these off have the shaft by itself and this is supposed to separate, but I can't tell you that I always have luck doing it, so. 
just gotta pry it off sometimes and it, and it works there's a ring on here and that's why it has trouble sometimes coming off so now you have this piece and this is let's call it ambidextrous if that's such a word I mean to use for this then you have that ring inside there that we need to pop out or we don't need to but we're going to pop it out and that's what secures this kind of inside there all right I think that's all I'm going to show you on this stuff uh, this also I don't know if I said this or not this does break down I'm not breaking this part down there's only a few pieces there you undo that screw this kind of pops out and yeah all right I'll get it cleaned up and come back to you guys show that put it back together oh one other thing the the handle does break down I'm not breaking it down uh, but to clean the handle off I'm going to use uh, probably a little bit of a wire brush and some 4 watt steel wool to kind of buff this out and make this look a lot nicer than it does right now it looks pretty dull and a lot of greening on it all right see you guys in a bit all right so let's go ahead and uh, grease and oil a few places first would be this one we're gonna oil this and here add some grease inside here Some inside that channel right there. A little bit around there where that uh, clicker is going to sit. Can put some inside that hole. Some on top. Some there. This might come off. I'm going to put more on again if, we, if it does. <coughs> now we're going to stick this in. And we're going to stick it in with the uh, with the clicker down. We'll pick it up. We'll put it up afterwards. I'm going to turn it somewhere in this area. That's kind of where around it's is going to be. Uh, first one I'm going to put in would be this one that has the right angle for the end. Notice there's a little slot or groove right there that's going to fit inside right there. Let me add a little bit of grease to that. So I'm going to drop that in like that follow that channel turn this until it drops inside that hole right there like that then we just take this one and stick it on the top truth is truth of the matter is you can put this one any way you want this is a secondary lock washer you can stick it that way if you wanted to I'm taking it out so you can show you a different one you can stick it this way if you wanted to it's all kind of the same thing doesn't do a whole lot except for a secondary uh, washer and now we're going to grease those threads a little bit so we can screw this nut on there and we're going to snug that down notice I was holding on to the back of this while I was screwing that down because I didn't want that those washers to slip out now at this point we can add some oil to it Just kind of work it up and down, let it go through. You can also add some oil to right there at the top, that little gap. Kind of do the same thing. And I'm going to leave it in the up position. Now let's go ahead and do the, the cam on the follower stack. Let's go ahead and grease all these up. In that channel right there the threads just because I like to and all the surface surface area of all these things here That should be good. Now the first thing that goes on would be this. I'm going to put it over this ramp. And the way it's looking is that flat side will be flush against the underside here. And 
just going to push it on. Now we can drop this in like this, looking just like that. Take this piece and kind of screw that in. And put it in all the way down to the bottom. Just like that. I'm not going to add any grease here because we have a bunch of grease that will be coming off of the bearing onto there. So let's go ahead and drop this in place. Drop the bearing down inside. And now we'll do the main gear stuff. So let's go ahead and grease all these places. Definitely a grease inside there. That ring kind of sits in there, so I'll show you that in a sec. But essentially I'm gonna grease lightly grease the gears and grease all the surface area of all these metal pieces. All right, that should work out nicely. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take this piece, drop it inside here. Notice there's a little separation right there. We're going to drop it in that underside of the of the uh, high gear. And so we're going to take one end and then just kind of rotate it around to where it drops in place. Push it down to make sure it's set in there. Now we're going to take this piece, drop that inside here, just like that this is where it takes a little bit of effort I'm gonna take one end kind of have it like that at an angle and then I'm gonna squeeze it together and you will have to play with this to kind of get it in and there it's set in place now the next step would be to take this drop this through kind of like that and we can take this piece drop that in remember the top or the sign or notice that says top is facing up now I'm going to take this spring open it up around one end and then kind of push you may need to use your uh, your flathead screwdriver or something to get it over but when you do that you want to make sure that it's around that groove or channel that it's supposed to be in which one this is which this one is so that's good now I'm going to take my spring where is my spring I lost my spring oh. light amount of grease just kind of run helps protect it you got a lot of uh potential water going inside there stick this through it just like that drop that in then we're going to screw that push down and screw okay that's good now I'm going to hold on to this snug it down Drop this screw on top of it, put this button over it, make sure it's flat, and put this final piece on, which is the washer, and you're good to go. Now we're going to take that gear, drop it in, see how that feels, yeah that feels good. Lock it up with the e-clip, the easier way of putting this e-clip on uh, I think is to use the flat sides and push it on that way doesn't mean you get it with your hand I use my pliers to do it now do make sure that it's set on there now 
Now we're going to take these two things, this and our lever. Before we put the lever on there, I'm going to add a little bit of oil right there and some grease around there and on the back side. I'm also going to go ahead and grease uh, this knob, the tension knob part. Grease that uh, prong right there. Drop this down. Now I'm going to take the lever. I'm going to rotate this a little bit so I can get some gap or space there to fit this over because this is keyed. And it looks something like, like that. Then I'm going to push it back to over the free spool button. Now I'm going to take this piece. Hopefully this is lined up. Uh, having it kind of straight up and down looking like that is probably the best way to do it. Uh, but it still might be a little tricky. So now I'm looking for that slot, dropping it straight down, and I'm going to stick some oil in here. And I'm going to rest this because I forgot to grease those things, so hopefully it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm just going to secure it with this. And as I, was, as I was saying with that lever or that uh, the knob thing, uh, if it doesn't fit that way, you may have to play with the uh, with the tension, the tensioner inside there, by screwing it up or down to moving that uh, that slot in a different position. Let's go ahead and screw these in. Alright, that's that. Now let's go ahead and get the stack put back together. Now I'm going to add a little bit of grease inside here. And just some on top there like that. Now I'm going to take this and just drop it over. I don't know why it's so hard to get on there, but it is. It's probably the e, e clip that's under it. And before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and grease all these other screws that we have left. Okay, so now let's go ahead and stick the handle on. Add some grease to right here. Some to right here. Over that hole. And we're going to add some oil to there there and around there kind of work that in just drop it over it and then screw it in with this piece just add a little bit of grease right there add some around that section where the e-clip or sorry c-clip is going to go and let's screw this down this may not be too tight because we need to line that up with that plastic piece right there uh, I don't remember where it goes that might be right may not be right back it up and that looks good now we can put this piece over it just gonna drop that on 
looks good enough. Now we're going to take our E-clip, I'm sorry, our C-clip, and pop that on there. I'm going to use my screwdriver to just kind of pop it on. And then that's secure. Now we can take this piece. Uh, I'm going to add some grease to some sections. Kind of like that. I think that should be enough. And now I'm going to stick this over these two holes or two prongs right here. Those two holes, one, two, will be fitting over it. Now sometimes when you put this on, it doesn't stay flush or doesn't go flush. So you have to rotate this. I'm rotating the entire black piece until it just kind of drops in place. I want to. I don't want this moving a lot with it, but I want both moving together. At some point, this will just drop and set in place so you can put this piece on. Ready to put this on is stick that end on kind of at an angle like this, then rotate it over flat until you get to this end, and that should fit inside the channel on the other prong. If that's not happening, then it's still sitting too high, but this one is nice and flush. Now all we do here is just take this, stick it through. I'm going to add some grease around it. We just stick it through. And now you're set. Now you can always test this out now by playing with the gears. Right now you're in low gear. You can see that. If I take this and rotate this, I just rotated the bottom piece, the base. Now I should be in high gear. And there we go. Now we're in high gear. So we know it's working. All right, so now we take this. Let's add a little bit of grease inside here. We're going to start by hand screwing it on. We get to a certain point where we have some sort of resistance. We're going to stop there. And then we're going to take this piece and fit it over the slot and then we're going to hand tighten it and if you have the, the strength you can do that if you don't then use the uh, device grip like I had done earlier to remove it now we're going to marry the two uh, pieces together and like I said before this is where you have a little bit of issue right because you have those gears there they can't I'm sorry those washers there they can't go on with the With the gear blocking it so we have to take this and set them over here kind of like that that's kind of just a feel game you know i'm holding on to this spool so it doesn't fall out i got my my clutch washers set onto the pinion gear i'm gonna slide it over until i feel that slot I don't want to go too much because I forgot the, the lug, but we'll go ahead and get that on right now. Make sure that's in the free spool mode. Drop it down. Rotate it around to where it should be lined up, which is right there. And then start screwing everything in place. Let's do a little bit of double checking to make sure everything is working fine. Now we can get this base, put that on, line up over the holes, and then take our metal piece and just kind of stick it on there. And we are almost home free. All right, let's do a quick little test on this reel, make sure it's working fine. There's a there's a free spool. Sounds good. That little knocking is from the drag, the drag section over here on this side. That feels good. Shouldn't be a lot of drag on it, which there isn't. 
Let's see how the two speed works. That's the low speed. There's the high speed. That works well. Uh, the last thing we're going to do here is just kind of oil the back side. I didn't test the clicker out, so let's go ahead and test that so we can hear it. That works well. And now we're just going to put our new bracket on. And our screws. Alright, while I do that guys, thanks for watching. If you found the video useful, please hit that thumbs up button. If you appreciate content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. And I thank you once again for watching. See you all next time.